Hi, uh, Cult of the Amateur. Um, hope you're doing good. Uh, this is my long-awaited reply to your last video on your um, Arab Spring analysis uh, videos. Uh, thanks very much for replying to me again and uh, taking an interest in this uh, in me and this discussion. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, um, your last video I think probably led led me to be a bit more confused about the issues we're discussing and uh, so this video might be a little bit more down the lines of asking you for some clarifications about what you what you're saying um, rather than uh, arguments argumentation like I was coming out with a bit more in the last video um, to recap for for the viewers who may have just joined this debate um, the claims you made in your first video about the Arab Spring were um, you said that um, in uh, Egypt and the and the Arab Spring basically can be sort of summed up by a, as an opposition uh, as a kind of conflict between um, globalists and a, a group you describe as uh, neo uh, traditionalists. Um, now. Um, and uh, you you also go on to say that uh, the neo traditionalists um, the, you you don't really approve of either group that much, and uh, you don't really want globalization to sort of take over the world because it might uh, lead to a kind of dystopia where I think we lose a lot of community and culture and stuff. Um, you also a bit worried about the the neo traditionalists taking over. Um, the kind of second point, or what I seem to be regarding as a, a different point you made, is that uh, in the West, um, the uh, Occupy movement isn't much of an opposition to globalization because it is too too much of globalization. The the uh, the occupiers are pretty much. Pardon me. <laughs> Sorry burping now um, the the the, the uh, occu occupiers are basically um, uh, enmeshed in the kind of global capitalist system um, okay so the kind of clarification I want I think with with the the first point uh, with the uh, neo traditionalists is, is I'm, I'm I'm not quite clear who these neo-traditionalists are really. You've given quite a lot of examples but I really, if I had an exam in this, this analysis tomorrow I'd be a bit worried because I don't really feel I've got a handle on who these neo-traditionalists are. You also in your first video talked about uh, I believe it was paleo-traditionalists. Uh, um, you seem to be talking about a lot, a lot, lot of different um, people um, the main ones you seem to be talking about, especially, especially in your latest video, are, um, are kind of socialist states. Um, so I'm not quite clear why you're not just calling them socialist states, why you've brought in this new term, uh, neo-traditionalists. Um, I think that there's a... Well, the word traditionalist seems strange because it seems to be a bit of a misnomer for some of these... Um, socialist states which tend to be quite secular um so he said i was saying i don't think he was really into tradition that much yeah. and uh likewise the uh, venezuela government uh, at the moment they seem to be socialists and kind of in the tradition of kind of sweeping away uh, a lot of these uh things like uh, the church um so I'm not exactly sure uh, what you mean there. I mean, I, I said in my earlier video that it sounds like it's everybody who's against globalization or everyone who's against, like, capitalism or the IMF or something. Um, so it sounds a little bit like to me. Um, so um, also I've been thinking, I mean, aside from this terminology business, I uh, have been thinking a little bit about what you're claiming in terms of the uh, like Egypt situation being uh, a um, conflict between these two two groups, and what and I was making a counterclaim that it's really about Democrats versus authoritarians. Uh, 
what was I, what did I mean by that, especially when I kind of said there doesn't have to be one group that is the is the Democrats and the other being the authoritarians. It doesn't have to be exactly that, um, but to still be about that. Uh, I confess uh, what it might be a little bit is that I look at these kind of protesters um, and the uh, in Taraya Tar Square um, and the, the authoritarian regime and I, I, I'm sort of thinking, oh, yeah, I really hope they have democracy there, and I'm, I'm, I'm really into democracy. So uh, I may be kind of imposing my own sort of hopes and interests on, on the situation there. I'm uh, thinking about it just now. I mean, what might be a reasonable uh, standard for saying what what the whole uh, conflict is about is what what would a typical Egyptian household at the moment, what if they're talking about the the current politics of of Egypt, what what issues are they discussing? Um, I mean, in my I'm pretty ignorant about it all, but I, in my imagination, I I think that certainly when the the the, the Arab Spring first kicked kicked off, and the protesters were in uh, Taraya Square, or Taria Square, um. I uh, I would imagine a kind of typical family discussion or student discussion or whatever would be sort of somebody saying, oh, well, you know, Mubarak has done a reasonably good job. He's kept sort of the peace with our neighbouring countries. He's uh, he's kind of kept the country ticking over or whatever. And, uh, and then someone else might say in opposition, like, but, you know, we don't want a dictatorship. We want to make our own decisions. It's not right that one person decides everything for the country so the kind of philosophical discussion is is about authoritarianism versus democracy there um, I mean, I'm just making that up I could be completely wrong maybe the discussions were all about economics um, or uh, I mean I admit the now it probably has changed and if the Muslim Brotherhood are really the kind of major pro players um, the kind of discussion might have moved on to something more like religion versus uh, secularism. Um, so um, yeah, I don't. I, mean, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I'm pretty ignorant ab about the Arab Spring. So um, I mean, to to know to, to kind of decide between our two kind of uh, takes on things. We I guess we could look at. I don't know. We could, it is kind of. Uh, um, a kind of empirical question. We could find out what the d debates were. What, what were? I mean, what were the claims? What were the demands being made by the protesters? Um, uh, I confess that, that uh, thinking about it, the, I think the, the Muslim Brotherhood were there from the start, that, and a lot of those protesters. The protesters would must have been a kind of mixed bag of everybody who <laughs> sort of hated hated the regime so uh, there would have been people uh, maybe the Muslims were generally uh, people who were also authoritarians but religious authoritarians so they, all they want is a religious authority and not a secular one um, I'm assuming Mubarak was roughly speaking secular um, but yeah, in your analysis, we seem to be saying that the protesters were broadly speaking um, globalizers and the regime was uh, neo-traditionalist. Am I right in saying that? I don't know. Uh, I think I think that's what you're saying. Um, and uh, I just don't know. I mean, they were probably must have, uh, as I said, they were probably a mixed bag of people protesting. Uh, some of them probably were sort of globalizers. Um, I don't really know. Um, so this isn't much good for the viewers. I haven't really researched this at all. So you're not going to learn much from this video. But uh, I mean, was Mubarak's regime into globalization? Was it doing what the IMF told it to do? Um, they seem to be getting a lot of support from the Americans, um, like a billion, billion dollars a year or something, just for weapons. Uh, so. We get massive money from uh, from the USA. Uh, it was going to that dictatorship. Um, 
So what was that all about? Uh, uh, yeah, I just I just don't know. I mean, it could it could be the I, th I I confess it was there probably was an economic element to the to the protest. I think the Arab Spring, as I said in my first video, the, I think the Arab Spring did happen for economic reasons. I think the food prices got squeezed in the last sort of half decade, and uh, I think it drove. It drove a lot of people to the starvation, and the, they got angry. Um, but also, it made regimes look weaker, and because they weren't like delivering the goods. Uh, so, uh, I think there were there was an economic element to why it happened. But I th I think my feeling was uh, maybe based on BBC News reports, which were probably pretty superficial. Um, my feeling was that the the discussion in the country wasn't economic. It was, um, and if it was, I'm not exactly clear what the protesters, which side of the economics they were on. Maybe they were championing the poor, and they were actually anti-globalizers, sort of thing. They were against the IMF more than Mubarak was. Uh, again, I don't really know. Um, okay, so that's the the first point you're making again. Um, that's the globalizers, uh, the, the Occupy movement being uh, a bunch of no-hopers because they're um, because they're basically into globalization themselves. Um, I kind of stand by sort of what I was saying in the last video. I still, I'm still confused. Well, maybe I would like a clarification about what you mean by globalization. I know I've, I've been looking it up. And I, I don't see it's a concept that really kind of hangs together. Um, I mean, I uh, I'm an anti-capitalist myself, but I like the concept capitalism or the, or the free market even better. I think it's a very pure concept that I can I can understand. Like I can say I'm for it or against it. Was globalization? If that include what does that include? I mean, if you take it literally, it includes anything that's a kind of internationally based thing. You could say that the um, Catholic Church is globalization or the communist international or just I don't know FIFA I don't, uh, I don't really know um, exactly what's being meant but what's being meant by that or what what the use of putting the concept together in fact I'm a little suspicious it's a bit of a propaganda term to really make the free market sound a bit nicer, or sounded like an inevitable modernizing sort of thing. Um, as for the Occupy people being no hopers, um, I think you're being a little bit uh, uncharitable to them. They're not uh, just posers. I think they really, I mean, I think you acknowledge that you said they, they believe what they're saying, but it's not a, not just a rite of passage. They're, they're a lifelong they're sort of campaigners there, um, people who have given up things to to do politics. Um, I think the th my problem with them is it's a little bit antagonistic and I think I imagine a kind of floating voter just watching it on the news might think, oh, it's not very nice, they're kind of creating a mess or creating trouble. It's a kind of bit of a gift to the, the press to kind of... Uh, um, you know, slur slur them by by sort of talking about a few drug dealers or amongst them or whatever. I um, also think another little problem, uh, more of a conceptual problem, is that a lot of them are uh, anarchists, and uh, for me, anarchism doesn't seem to amount to much of a system. Like, you know, like if anarchism was declared tomorrow, I don't know what the hell would happen. I probably yeah, would prefer it not to happen because uh, I don't think quite clear what what these kind of anarchists are demanding um, but uh, I don't um, what else were you saying you're saying about Amnesty International those kind of those kind of uh, anti they're not anti-capitalist maybe but um, anti uh, s some of these kind of um, progressive kind of organizations are massively uh, bourgeois or hierarchical sort of like you've got a kind of revolving door policy between them and the kind of big companies or whatever um 
Yeah, I think it's probably it's probably true. I mean, I wouldn't probably wouldn't join Amnesty International based on the stuff you were saying. And I've also heard from people in Interna- uh, Amnesty International similar stuff. Uh, and uh, I did see some uh, left wing kind of uh, analysis of them being. Uh, uh, some person at the top of Amnesty was kind of pr- uh, promoting the uh, war on terror or something, uh, <laughs> or friends with friends with Hillary Clinton, I think it was. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the reason I said, I think the reason I give them ex- as an example was that they are. I don't think. I mean, yeah, they inevitably have got to be involved in capitalism. They are involved with money and donations and all that, but um, and they are hierarchical. Uh, but I think the actual, they're not really preaching capitalism. I think they are, I was just trying to say that globalization, um, the, hu- the human rights uh, isn't really something that hangs together with, with capitalism. Uh, it's inevitable that some big human rights organization is going to be having to get involved with money and going to be a bit corrupted. Um, but uh, I don't think we should use the same word to kind of describe what they are and what and what kind of uh, HSBC are. Um, I think the world that the Amnesty International would make is very different to the world that HSBC would would give us. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th- I think basically anyway to to stop rambling, um, the. Uh, I think these alternative organizations, maybe not so much Amnesty, but certainly the, the Occupy people, they are preaching something different. If they did get in control, it would be it would be an alternative. Uh, and uh, what can I say? I think I think if you if you're looking at reforms in history, you'll find the reformers won't won't be purely like uh, a complete revolutionary change from what went before. I mean, I was just thinking now. The example of uh, F. W. de Klerk, I believe his name is, uh, in in South Africa. I mean, and, and again with the the last uh, uh, Soviet guy, uh, Michael Gorbachev, Mikhail uh, Gorbachev. Um, I mean, these people too have got where they were. They must have been racists. Uh, um, in the case of de Klerk and uh, authoritarian communists, in the case of uh, the other guy. But they they did those changes, so you, you and and yeah, and in the, in the example I give of of like the French Revolution going to hell and the the uh, the uh, English Civil War. I mean, I th- I'm I'm not clear that they. I think that though uh, maybe not the French Revolution, but in the English Civil War was a step towards democracy. So I wasn't trying to make out that they that the, the opposition were exactly the same as what they were fighting and they became completely 100% corrupted and there was no hope of democracy, whoever was in charge. I think that there were, there were clear differences and I think in the case of the, the English Civil War it did sow the seeds of parliamentary uh, democracy in, in our country. Um, okay, anyway, I'm f- approaching 20 minutes here on this video. Uh, yeah, it'd be good to hear some responses to the come kind of some of the direct things I've asked you in this video, and uh, I'm really enjoying the debate. And uh, I'm sorry this took a while to get back to you, but uh, I explained uh, that I've been very busy. Uh, so, cult of the amateur, all the best, mate.